Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're melting stuff. Well, since this whole plastics thing started a few weeks back on Alternative Tuesdays, I've seen the way the shavings have rolled off of this thing, whether it be in the jointer or whether it be in the table saw, and the way that it curls off on the lathe and that sort of thing. And I can't help but wonder what happens if we melt it. So what I've done is over all this time, I've been saving this stuff. And I've got a box of it and I don't know how it's going to react but I've got myself an idea and I want to try it so fail or win here you're going to see the results so let's head over to the bench well this may be the last known recording from me as I show you what would be the damning evidence that I have stolen my wife's toaster oven out of the kitchen for this experiment. And uh, you guys know I'm no stranger to stealing something out of the kitchen and I usually get away with it. However, I've never stolen an appliance. So this could go really bad for me, but we're gonna find out. What I've got is in here, I have an eight by eight cake pan, a non-stick cake pan. I got it at like the local dollar store for a few bucks. So if it gets wrecked, I don't really care. But what I'm hoping is that if I take the plastics that I showed you in the photo of the last segment and I place them in here and I put them in the toaster oven at, oh, I don't know, I'm thinking 350 degrees, I'm hoping it's gonna melt. So let's load this up and see what happens here. Now, I don't know how much translates to what here so I'm just going to put some in and then we'll put them in the oven and we'll see how this actually melts. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. Um, this could be really cool. This could be a real epic mess. I could be buying my wife a new toaster oven. Who knows? So there we go into the toaster oven. We're just going to check here we want to, I don't even know how to use this thing. Okay, we're gonna set it for 350 degrees and we're gonna turn it on. I think that's how it goes. On. And I think we wanna go bake. Okay, let's try that for a while and see how we do. Uh, I'm gonna start timing, maybe give it 15 minutes and then I'll come back and see you. Okay, after a ridiculously short amount of time, I started to get some smoke coming out of the toaster oven and I ended up with this crispy little morsel. So what I've done is I've turned down the heat. Um, I don't think this is ruined. I think it can be reused, but I've turned down the heat now to uh, about 250, 275, and I've put a fresh batch in there, and we're gonna see how that goes. So in the meantime now, I want to cut a piece of three quarter inch MDF that will be seven inches by seven inches. Okay, well I'm telling you, this stuff really melts fast and really starts smoking fast too. So the purpose of this board was going to be to squish this stuff down in the hopes of not sticking to anything. But I don't know if that's going to work or not. We're going to try it and see what happens. And then hopefully maybe we can continue to add to it as it goes on. That seems to be working. That seems to be working just fine. So we'll put this piece back in there like that. And then we're going to get some more and stack in there and see how we do with that. So just get a little more of the plastic, spread it around in there.
And then back into the oven she goes again. I'm just like Betty Crocker here making making a cake or something. Kenny Crocker. <laughs> All right. So to tell you the truth, I'm up at 300 degrees here is what I'm running the oven at. And let's see what we come up with in just a few minutes as this stuff begins to melt and thaw. Or soften, I should say, not thaw. I've just pulled this batch out after just a couple of minutes because it's already starting to soften and I can already start to smell it in there. It seems to be a telltale sign that as soon as you start to smell it, uh, you're pretty much hitting the melting point at that, at that point in time. So I'm not sure what we've got here. But it looks like it could be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm going to turn that over there. We're going to melt some more. I'm going to keep working like this, adding extra layers and compressing it a little more and that sort of thing. It's, it's getting a really cool consistency. I dig it. So let's keep melting this and see what happens. We're going to keep compressing it. The next time we bring it out and compress it, I'm going to get a second board and put on the bottom like what I've got right here and get some clamps on there and get some really good clamping pressure and see if we can't compress this even more. Let's just see what we've got here and we'll slap that down just like that. And let's see if we can't get a couple clamps on there to pull that in. I don't see why we can't. Sorry about getting my arm in the way. This is a little more awkward than I had initially thought it was going to be. So there we go. We've just squished this down. And let's see what we've got here now. Again, kind of a uh, cool, spongy kind of kind of a texture to it. Let's melt it some more and see what happens. We're going to keep adding to it and keep keep squishing it down. Check that out. I dig it. We're going to let this cool. And uh, once it cools, we're going to take it over to the table saw. Well, our next step in the process is I want to square off one side here. So I'm going to use the gripper as the square edge against the fence. And I'm going to run this through and just square off the one side. From here I'm going to cut it into three and a half inch strips and then into three and a half inch cubes. Um, and then we'll go from there. So I've got a two and three eighths inch diameter Forstner bit here, and I'm gonna drill uh, this size hole 
about halfway down through our little pancake here, as you might call it. Okay, well we've got layers separating, so how can we fix that? I say we need to melt it more. Okay, well that didn't work. So uh, we're going to heat it up some more and uh, get it back to its original form. I've broken up those four little pads that we had cut up from before and we're going to melt them down and get it back to our original squared up piece and see if we can not change up the way we do it. What I'm going to change for starters is I've turned the heat up a little bit uh, to 350 degrees and I'm going to leave it in there longer to let the heat permeate right through the entire block. To avoid things like fumes and that sort of thing and having to vent the shop, what I've done is I've taken this thing outside. I've set it for 250 degrees and we're going to let it bake in there for about a half an hour and see how we do. Well, this has been in here for half an hour and what I'm going to do is I've got some quarter 20 nuts that I'm just going to spread around the outside of the perimeter of this board here. And what we're going to try to do is compress this plastic. It's been in there at 250 for half an hour. So I'm going to dump it onto here, get a second board on top, and then we're going to try to compress it. There we go. Like that. It's going to be hot, so be careful. Be careful. And then we're going to try to compress it. Now, I don't know how well this is going to work, but we'll try and see what happens. Well, we obviously weren't able to compress it enough to hold the nuts but we do have some compression there. So I'm just going to see how much we have and then we'll go from there. Well, we're going to try this again with our newly melted and compressed concoction here. And we're going to start off by trimming off the edge here just to try to square it, square it up a little bit. And then from there, we'll go back to our trick of cutting it into our squares again. Uh, just as we tried to do before, we're going to attempt to put that two and three eighths of an inch recess into the top end of this uh, of this project, and we'll just see how we do with that. There we have that recess into our project. So go ahead and do all four of them now uh, with that same two and three quarters inch recess. Well, the next thing that you want to do is you want to clean up all of the edges. Just take the sharp edges off of them, round them off just a little bit, just with some hand sanding. You don't have to go crazy with it. Just a little bit of hand sanding around the outside edges. And then as well, what we're going to do is we're going to get a knife and we're just going to clean up around the inside edge 
of that hole that we drilled. Well, so far this build has been nothing but a big mess of experimentation, some failure, some success. We seem to have some success right here with the compressed plastic after we've melted it. And now that we have those holes drilled in top and we've cleaned them up around the outside of the holes and taken sandpaper and rounded off all of those square edges, we're going to need some thin cork. So what I've got is these little medallions of cork and I've used a compass to draw out the diameter of our hole that we drilled in these, uh, in these pieces of plastic. So we're just going to cut this out and the whole purpose here is to give a little bit of cork inside of our project and that is what is going to finish it off for us. So there we go, just trim it up like that. And we're going to take some CA glue and we're going to glue that in place in there just like that. And there you have it. Some recycled ABS drink coasters. Guys, not every project turns out the way that you'd think it would. And with this one, we certainly had our problems. Uh, with the whole assembly breaking apart and not heating it up, but that's half of the fun. That's half of experimenting with what you have. And I mean, all of these shavings that come off of this ABS as I'm working with it, this is product that can be reused um, and it reused quite well. I mean, I showed these to my wife and her response was, they're ugly. Well, you know what? So am I, but you love me. So I think these are awesome. Truth be told, these are for use in my shop as I'm always, you know, having something to drink, whether it be a can of pop or whether it be a, a, dry, a drink of water or what have you. And I'm always looking for somewhere to put it down. And this here will keep it so that I'm not leaving water spots on some of my tools, especially my workbench. I certainly wouldn't put it on the cast iron, but these will work at the workbench for sure. Guys, this is a lot of fun. This was a great project, and it was only done because I could. No other reason other than just to try it, because sometimes that's what it's all about. Sometimes it's about doing it because you think you can, not because you necessarily have a need to do it. It's just the way it is sometimes. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this experiment of a show. I hope you're going to give something like this uh, a try yourself because it's a lot of fun. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And in this world of recycling, what better way to do it than to make a useful uh, item for your shop or for your home, even if it is ugly, as my wife says. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in again this week. And I hope you're going to join me again for another Alternative Tuesday.